Welcome to a Break in the Action podcast. Here we'll take a break from the tactical and spend our time on the traditional, the Break Action Double Barreled Shotgun. Join us for discussion and interviews centered around vintage and modern shotguns, outdoor pursuits, and sporting literature. So sit back and relax as we take a break in the action. Here's your host, shotgun collector, wing shooter, and sporting clays enthusiast, Ryan Dowdy. We're in uncharted waters for this episode. We have no guest. I don't get a lean on anyone's expertise or experience for this topic, but don't skip ahead to the next episode just yet. While I'm admittedly still learning about a lot of things related to shotguns, I could teach a master class on buying them. Over the years, I've bought, and this is no exaggeration and I'm embarrassed to say, well over a hundred double barrel shotguns. I'm not a gun dealer, but would wager to guess that I've handled more doubles than a lot of gun shops. My interests have changed over the years, and I'm fortunate to be in a position to spend a bit more on the shotguns that catch my eye. But when I was searching for my first double-barreled shotgun, I can still vividly remember wondering why they were so expensive and what a good choice for a first double would be. So today, let's turn the clock back about 25 years. I didn't grow up around guns and had no prior hunting experiences. I never thought a shotgun could be an heirloom. I never watched my dad or grandpa wipe down his old fox after a day in the grouse woods. This was all new to me. In the mid-90s, I was in my 20s when I was introduced to hunting, wing shooting, and eventually skeet and sporting clays. I found the shotguns that I dreamt about and those that I could afford were miles apart. These were the days before the internet dominated, and I had no idea how to research a good first gun option. The few local gun shops around me provided my only real candidates. I ended up buying an Italian shotgun, brand new, by the manufacturer Silma, a Model 70. If my memory serves me correctly, I paid about $600 in several installments for it. It was a 12-gauge, 28-inch barrel, fixed choke, single trigger, non-ejector, over and under. Wood was broom handle plain, stained and sealed with no extra finish that I can remember. I think the checkering was hand cut, but nothing precise, and the plastic butt plate seemed to actually increase the recoil of the gun. The silver finish action was covered in a flat, soulless laser engraved scene of flushing pheasant and quail. I don't want to sound snobbish here because I was actually over the moon with what was my new shotgun. I would proudly uncase my budget stack barrel to hunt squirrels, miss at doves, and embarrassingly learn the game of skeet. In time though, other guns, different guns, better guns, caught my eye which marked the beginning of 25 years of buying, selling, trading, and collecting shotguns. When the day came to trade my beloved Silma, I don't remember coming out particularly well in the deal. I always take excellent care of my guns, so its condition wouldn't have been a factor, but I learned quickly that mediocre quality offerings from lesser known makers aren't going to do well on the secondary market. So here's my question. In thinking through what a better choice for a first double-barreled shotgun would be, and with the experience that buying and selling and trading so many shotguns has given me, How would I do it differently today? Inflation calculators tell us that $600 spent on that Silma back in 1997 would equate to approximately $1,000 today. So we're going to discuss my probably incomplete list of the best first double barrel shotguns up to $1,000. The shotguns that I list here won't be brand new. Frankly, I think most of the entry price shotguns, while very well marketed, are going to leave you in the same boat that my Silma left me lacking in either features or quality or both. I'm much more a fan of buying higher quality pre-owned shotguns that still have generations or more of shooting left in them. You'll also notice that my list doesn't have any true American vintage shotguns in it. This isn't because these can't often be great options and certain models can certainly be bought in that thousand dollar price range, but the stock dimensions of American vintage shotguns were designed for very different shooting styles than is customary today, and they can be pretty difficult to adapt to. I don't want to get too far off in the weeds on this now, but this will be a great topic for another podcast. Guns International, my favorite site to kill time on, currently lists 352 manufacturers and categories under shotguns, and as best I can calculate, 
almost 11,000 individual shotguns are listed for sale. To pare this list down to something a little bit more manageable, the guns on my list will have the following characteristics. Be made of high quality materials from a known and reputable maker. Be of modern design with modern dimensions and features. Be available in overall very good condition in the $1,000 price range without too much hunting. There are definitely diamonds in the rough out there that represent better quality, better finishing, and possibly even a better price than we've got listed here, but these come up for sale few and far between, and they aren't reliably available. Last, and I've said it before, I'm no expert. These are shotguns that I've had personal experience with, owned, researched, and drawn conclusions on. Before we get to the list, a quick word on saving and spending. I'm a firm believer that as long as your important obligations are met, and it doesn't create a future financial hardship, i.e. credit card debt, it's okay and even healthy to save for and reward yourself occasionally. Some might find it hard to justify a $1,000 shotgun purchase. Consider this then. Find something that's costing you money that you would like to change. Using tobacco, drinking too much, eating too much fast food, betting on sports games, maybe even just regular trips to Starbucks. Reduce or cut that activity out altogether and make a point of saving those unspent dollars away somewhere special. After several months or maybe a year, I would venture to say that your stash of cash will be enough to buy that double barrel shotgun and you can honestly justify it as a reward for correcting a bad habit. Also, while shotguns definitely don't represent a wise financial investment, buying correctly and properly maintaining will typically at least protect your initial investment. This isn't the case for almost anything else that we buy today. Okay, so let's get on with our list. I'm breaking this list down into three major categories. Countries of manufacture, actually. Italy, Japan, and the United States. And this isn't exactly random. As economics go, the combination of knowledgeable and skilled craftsmen and wage standards country to country change over time. Manufacturers searching to economically build their shotguns first looked to the cheap labor and skilled craftsmanship in Birmingham, then on to Belgium. Then, as labor rates rose there, Italy and Spain became a more economical option. Japan took over in the 1970s, and it appears Turkey is the country of choice today. A quick side note, I'm leaving Turkish shotguns off this list because we haven't yet been able to tell which manufacturers will stand the test of time and which will fall by the wayside due to low quality and non-interest in their products. As we go through this list and some of these overseas brands, you won't hear about the dozens of other companies from these countries that have come and gone. Shotguns are romantically multi-generational, something you want to hand down to your kids, and the shotguns whose quality and manufacturing don't stand up to the test of time are forgotten. Up first, Italy. The Silver Snipe was offered by Beretta back in the 1960s before Beretta really became a dominant player in the American double shotgun game. Aside from the odd way that Beretta decided to adorn the action, these are overall nice looking shotguns. The Silver Snipe was well built and became the design predecessor of the iconic Beretta 680 series of shotgun, including the 682, 686, and 687 models. While parts won't be interchangeable with the more modern Berettas, Their design and function will be very familiar to any local gunsmith, so seldom needed repairs shouldn't be much of an issue. The Silver Snipe represents the only shotgun in this list that I have not actually owned at one time or another. I can say, though, from experience with the many 680 series guns that I've had and the earlier BL2s that Breda knows how to build a reliable shotgun. You don't become the oldest continually operating manufacturer in the history of the world, by offering finicky designs that aren't time-proven and reliable. I've heard the modern-day Berettas referred to as the Honda Accord of shotguns as a way to summarize their reliability. It's safe to say that the early Silver Snipes laid the groundwork for this modern Beretta stereotype. I wrestled with this, but Beretta is the only Italian manufacturer that I'm going to list, and this was tough. There are many Italian makers who have produced nice guns that can be bought within our budget constraints, Fabarm, Franchi, Zoli, Rosini, and Bernadelli quickly come to mind. But over the years, quality and reliability of shotguns put out by these makers have fluctuated. This uncertainty in what you might buy, especially from an online dealer, left me a little bit too nervous. Second, we move to the land of the rising sun, Japan. This is the country that boasts the most entries on our list. 
And first up is Weatherby. Kansan and insurance salesman Roy Weatherby made a name for himself by building premium, highly accurate Mauser action rifles back in the late 1940s. Weatherby expanded into shotguns around 1970 with highly adorned Italian doubles that were priced just higher than the Belgian-made Browning Superposed. By around 1980, that European inflation we discussed earlier made it necessary for Weatherby to move shotgun production to Japan, first with Nico and later with SKB and currently with Turkish maker ATA. The over and under models are the Orion and side-plated Athena, and Weatherby has one of the few side-by-sides on this list in the Athena d'Italia. All three models are very well finished with the best wood of any guns on this list. They are well built and represent excellent value, being some of the most affordable too. I personally would search out the SKB made Weatherby's from around the 1990s to the early 2000s. Later offerings in this range will tend to have slimmer stocks, grips, and forends, and reflect the ever-evolving preferences of shooters. Weatherby shotguns will typically come with single selective triggers, ejectors, robust lockup, generations of reliability, and as I said, they're nice to look at. Roy Weatherby was a master of marketing and knew that performance was important, but style also sells guns. Weatherby shotguns do well following that formula. Another Japanese-built option, and as just mentioned, Shigyo Sakaba, or SKB, Their website traces their roots all the way back to being an armorer for the samurai warriors in the 16th century. How cool is that? Since the 1960s, SKB has manufactured shotguns for Ithaca and Weatherby, and beginning around 1990, SKB began selling guns in the U.S. under their own brand and are still doing so today. If you start to pay attention, you'll obviously see a huge similarity between the Ithaca and Weatherby models and the current SKB-offered shotguns. Built basically on the same pattern, they differ only cosmetically. The SKB design employs the WW Greener style crossbolt mechanism that remains one of the strongest breech lockups ever invented. I think the more modern SKB 500 and 600 series over and unders are excellent guns to search out. They are maybe a bit heavier than other options, but that heft comes from their robust and overbuilt action. You won't shoot out an SKB. That added weight then becomes a fair trade-off for that extra durability. Now we move on to Charles Daly and Maruku. In the 145-year history of the Charles Daly and related companies, we don't have enough time in this podcast to go through all the name changes, buyouts, and acquisitions. Through all these twists and turns, one thing has remained true with the brand. They import and market nice quality shotguns from reputable manufacturers. Over the years, Charles Daly's have been made by Sauer, Linder, Lefevre, Beretta, Bernardelli, and Moroku. The latter from Moroku are going to be the most readily available in our focused $1,000 price range. Moroku made Charles Daly's were imported into the U.S. in the 1960s and 1970s. Moroku is an established Japanese firearms manufacturer founded nearly a century ago. The Charles Daly Moroku shotguns might look familiar. That's because Moroku has also produced the Satori shotguns for Browning since the 1980s. I'm sure the designs aren't exactly the same, but they're very close cousins. Alongside the Satoris currently manufactured by Moroku today, they produce their own line of similar shotguns, which are primarily sold in the UK, but are still available secondhand here in the States. My first dedicated skeet gun was a Moroku with 26-inch barrels and fixed skeet skeet chokes. The gun had really nicely figured wood, uh, considering what I paid for it, and a nicely finished and hand-engraved action. If I'm being honest, the main reason my Moroku was eventually traded off had more to do with name recognition than anything else. Fellow gun nerds around the gun club had obviously heard of Moroku, but it wasn't uncommon to shoot with someone who was unfamiliar with the name. Marketing, brand recognition, and hype ultimately, embarrassingly, won out. I wouldn't mind still owning that Moroku today. And for our final Japanese option, check out the Winchester 101s made by Nico, as well as the Nico 712 and 5000 series shotguns. Like so many other American manufacturers, Winchester also approached a venerable Japanese maker to build their Model 101s. As far as I've been able to find, barrel lengths are available from 26 inches to 32 inches and engages 12 and 20. Both the 101s and the Nico offerings were considered to be well-built and finished, with various grades available to suit shooters' tastes. 
The Nico offerings are generally found to have a bit nicer wood and engraving. The only real criticism that I could find on these was that some shooters felt that they had higher than average recoil, but I have no personal experience. And finally, on to America. While some U.S. manufacturers opted to have the guns that bore their names made overseas, some were built right here. I'm definitely a sucker for American made when it's a good option, and here are two really good options that we can add to our list. First, the Remington Peerless. Remington knows how to build a shotgun, and they certainly know how to build a nice double. The Remington 32 and later model 3200 were at one time the trap gun to own, and its basic design now lives on in the outstanding German Kriegolf K80. In the early 1990s, Remington launched the Peerless. Built between 1993 and 1999, this 12-gauge over and under epitomized classic upland hunting. You couldn't watch any wing shooting programming on TV in the 90s without seeing commercials for the Remington Peerless. I've been a sucker for a side-plated side lock action, and this Remington called to me. Despite the fact that it's a box lock, they did a good job adding decorative side plates that I think gave the gun a really classic look. Early models of the Peerless had a decently well-done setter scene decorating the side plates, and later models just the word Remington. I like both. Available in 26, 28, and 30-inch barrels with choke tubes and ejectors, there was a lot to like here. Unique features like an adjustable forend latch to tighten up future loosening, owner-replaceable hinge pins, and both ejectors and automatic safety that could be turned on or off by the owner. What wasn't to like was the weight. Where Remington used the Model 3200's 8-plus pound weight to dampen recoil shooting trap, the Peerless was only a bit less chunky, which can make for long, exhausting days in the uplands. I can remember lugging my Peerless all across the northwestern high plains of Kansas chasing bird dogs and pheasants. Full 10-plus mile days were the norm, and if that's your style of hunting, the Peerless might not be right for you. Overall, though, it's a good option made by an iconic U.S. manufacturer. And finally, and it's probably no surprise, the Ruger Red Label. For me, this shotgun is the number one option on this list. With all that I know now about what makes a quality double barrel, the Red Label ticks most of those boxes. They were built to be extremely tough, made of high quality materials, and while Bill Ruger was a master of saving costs through automation, the Red Label has handwork where handwork was needed. Ruger didn't fuss or add costs by garishly trying to dress up an otherwise homely shotgun with rolled, stamped, or laser engraving. Instead, the clean, sculpted lines of the Red Label's early blued steel and later stainless steel receiver and the Claro walnut furniture are the adornment. Nothing more in my mind is needed. A 12-gauge or 20-gauge Red Label in 26 or 28-inch barrel makes for a fantastic bird gun, and it's at home on the skeet field or the sporting clays range too. Longer barrels are in vogue at the moment, and while the 28-inch barrels aren't exactly considered long, It looks to me like the 26-inch options do sell for a bit less. A limited run of 28-gauge versions of the Red Label were also made, but prices have been driven up by the collectors. Other variants include a 30-inch barreled Sporting Clays model and an all-synthetic and stainless steel all-weather model. These were great purpose-built shotguns, but probably a bit too nuanced for a first do-everything double barrel shotgun. I've owned at least a half dozen red labels over the years. To my memory, each was bought in the six to $800 price range. Looking over what is currently available, these seem to be going up in value, which is really no surprise. This is truly a new American classic, and they seem to be finally recognized as such. To summarize all this, I'd say that we live in a really unique time to be a shotgun buyer. With so many quality options made over the 130 plus years since the double barrel shotgun finished evolving, And the fact that the internet makes them so accessible to you, no matter where you live and where they are located, all that you need to do is be aware of some of these standout models from quality manufacturers. They're out there to find, and many of them are very much undervalued in comparison to what you can buy new today. So what are your thoughts on this list? Whether you're in the market for your first double or might have been asked to provide appreciated suggestions to someone who is. Do you agree with the shotguns I've listed here? Did I miss something? I'm sure that I have. I would encourage you to email me your comments at a break in the action at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes and look me up on Instagram at a break in the action.